recognize myself for uh, for five minutes for questions. I'm going to go pretty quick because there's a lot I want to put on the table. And um, so again, thank you all for coming. Um, the um, and first of all, I'll just put on the record: no one's here. We're not here debating to eliminate the EPA or or stop the uh, the work when there's toxicity and there's damage to human health. That's obviously not, that's not the proposal. The whole purpose of the hearing is, can we be smart and make sure that the rules are important enough in protecting human health while we're protecting jobs? And, and our, this new Congress is focused on job creation. So with that, I, wanna, I don't have a piece of Illinois bituminous coal. I do have one in my office that didn't get brought down. Mr. Hopkins, why is that important that you burn Illinois bituminous coal? Well, I'm from a, uh, an area Quickly in southern now. Illinois Quickly. that uh, mines Illinois coal, so we serve our members by using their product to create electricity for them. The coal found in Illinois is what type of coal? It is Illinois bituminous coal. So Fairly a, a co-op is different, uh, and, and really co-ops should be, and my friends on the other side, these are, these are agencies that you ought to, sh ought to love um, because you are not-for-profit, is that correct? That's correct. Your board members are highly salaried, is that right? Our board members are poorly paid. Poorly paid, volunteers, uh, uh, just uh, smallly compensated. Um, and the owners of the co-op are? The owners of the cooperatives are their members that they serve. So the members. So every customers. time we do something uh, that may affect uh, a regulatory burden, as you said in your testimony, say there's a new capital expansion, you can't, qu you can't carry a large capital fund for future expansions. You have to go where? We have to go out and look for a loan for the money. And we go to our ratepayers, our member owners, to pay that bill for that loan. Okay, and I'll just hold this up. <laughs> the same, same, picture? Pi same <laughs> picture they've seen at least six years. These are uh, Illinois coal Illinois miners, coal miners. Uh, used mining bituminous coal. Yeah. And because of many companies didn't do it, you did it out of complying with the needs to, d to create electricity for your members, but also protect coal miners' jobs. So you did the capital expense to do a scrubber, correct? That is correct. We, we installed scrubber in 1978. And the companies that did not do scrubbers, guess what they did to these miners? They fired them. Okay? That's the effect of regulations, and we want to applaud you for doing the right thing. Let me, I want to hold up this. <laughs> you don't have Eddie Markey's LNG tanker picture. I uh, know. <laughs> you know what this is? Mr. Hopkins, can you see Blank slate. Looks like a clean slate or a blank piece of paper. No, actually it's wallboard. Oh, it's wallboard. I'm sorry. What's in the middle? That would be calcium sulfate or gypsum. That and, is. and where do we get gypsum from? You can either get it naturally from the ground or you can get it from a uh, FGD on a coal-fired power plant, which we produce 95% pure mm. gypsum. Would this be part of the coal ash debate? It is. So, and this is found in everybody's home? Yes, sir. The, the particle boards for most people or the wall boards for most people that have been accused as being toxic came from where? Most of them came from overseas. Came from China. So in this debate, if the EPA is successful in regulating coal ash as a toxic, will you be able to sell gypsum to the person who produces the wall board? We're concerned that the uh, homeowner would not be interested in buying any product that would remotely be related to hazardous waste. And so then, then the home builders would have to get a different product. Okay, my time is uh, brief. I want to go to Mr. Baird. Um, duplicate regulation. The, the administration is trying to send signals that they want to be smart on regulatory, so they don't duplicate. Aren't you in a catch-22 on duplication of regulations? Uh, yes, the sir. The Forest Service and EPA. Yes, sir. How many jobs would this cobalt mine create? It will create directly 185 jobs. What is the employment rate of the, of the surrounding area? Well, the uh, two counties that would uh, benefit have uh, just over 12 percent for Lemhi and just over 14 percent for Rosh Hashanah. What would be the tax benefit to the area? It would just be a local property tax? Annual, well, it's not just the property tax, but okay, the, number the income tax and the employment is, is, is $8.8 .8 million per year. 
the um, and what is cobalt used for? It is used uh, for many high technology purposes, but the biggest single one is for jet engines. Is it also used in what people would define as green Absolutely. manufacturing? It's it's critical to the Toyota Prius battery. It's also critical for uh, wind power. Do you know where do we get cobalt right now? Right now, the uh, bulk of the super alloy cobalt, because there are two different types, comes from one uh, plant in uh, Norway. Right. Overseas. So Overseas. We import the, the product. And I, I, I'm going to take the prerogative chair just to make the point for Ms. Kinter, because you're a printer. Yes. You use ink. Yes. If you take that ink to a recycler, you fall under TSCA sure. and have to file additional paperwork. Is that correct? Correct, sir. Which we is pretty burdensome for a small business. Yes, sir. Okay. I, I wish I had more time. I don't. I'll yield five minutes to the ranking member, Mr. Green from Texas.